going on? Welcome to episode three of Snooty Lines Podcast. Of course, you know me, it's J.R. Washington Hill. But I think we're gonna switch it up this week. I think I wanna do more of a debate with a couple of my classmates. Honestly, I got the whole people in with me. You know, I got my cameraman, Tori. Shout out my man, Jacob, Gabe, Hunter, Chris, Michael. Y'all don't see them, but they all in the background with me right now. But I'm gonna give y'all a little rundown of what I'm gonna be doing for the next couple of weeks and how this thing gonna be rocking. So, this week I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going to Atlanta and I'm gonna be doing an interview with QT, play for the Red Breeds, and a couple players play for the team also. And also I'm going to birthday bash too, so man, I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna have a little fun myself. But the week after that, I'm gonna go back to my hometown, to Albany, Georgia, and interview the kickball team, cause you know, I'm an athlete and my parents met at least two, and most of them playing, and it's a bunch of phenomenal things going on from where I'm from, so I wanna give them a spotlight too. So of course we got some NBA, we got some football, I got some people wanna give appreciation to my home team, so you know I gotta let them rock a little bit. So from here we just gonna transition to the next topic in this new Lines Podcast, and now we come. Back to Snooty Lines Podcast. On my left I got Michael, and on my right I got Tori. Just I'm gonna go real quick, just a couple questions, just maybe like one. So, you know what I'm saying? Where you from, Mike? How y'all doing? My name is Mike Will, you know what I'm saying? From Orlando, Florida. I was born in Panama City, moved to the O when I was about eight years old. Um, if you guys haven't already followed Snooty Lounge, and like and subscribe, go ahead afterwards. Follow Max Parlays, I do got an Instagram. And follow we do that. have that Patreon. Go ahead and subscribe on the YouTube as well for those daily sports picks. For sure, for sure. I got man Tori here from Virginia. You already know. Yeah, yes, no. sir. I know you was in the military too, you know, we yeah. talk about that a lot. So, yeah. what was your MOS? What was your job? Uh, I was a 92 Yankee. If you don't know, that's logistics in supply. the military. Yeah, supply. You know, we deal with all the paperwork, we give all the guns, we watch over the uh, guns. If you go to the field, MREs, food, all that, you know. It's all appreciate for your service, bro. All right, sir. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get some of these NBA topics. So, you know, the first one I feel like we gotta do the KD sweepstakes, man. You know, Honestly, that's my favorite player in the NBA. But I want to know how y'all feel about that. I'm gonna let you pop up first one. What's up with that? So honestly, if he if he's not gonna stay with, he's clearly not gonna stay with Brooklyn Nets. I honestly, he feels the best chance or the best team that has the best chance to get him would be Portland Trail Blazers. Ooh. We've already seen Dame try to advertise on IG for him. Facts. They already got rid of McCullum. Facts. Come on now. They kept Anthony Simmons. So you got the one and the two. Let's just go ahead and add the three. Let's go ahead and add Durant there, man. It seemed like a perfect fit, in my opinion. Okay. That's where I can see him going if he does, you know what I'm saying, find his way out of Brooklyn. For sure, for sure. All right, so how you feel about that, Tori? What's up? Man, this, this is this is blasphemy, in my opinion. KD's not going nowhere. No way. He's not going nowhere. So Kyrie going to be there with him, too? Kyrie's definitely, he, he might be on a move, but I think it will be harder for them to get rid of KD. And if they can't get rid of KD right now, they're not going to be able to get rid of him during the season. Okay. They're already going to be invested. So I think that he'll get traded at the end of the year. He'll be out of there, okay. but he'll get traded at the end of the year. He's going he's gonna to stay. Just one more little piggyback question. So if KD stay and they got Kyrie, how far do you think you got them going? If they oh, got Kyrie as constructed, Yeah, as constructed now with Ben Simmons and everything like that. How far do you think they'll go? As constructed, just like this right now, KD don't move, Kyrie stay. As far as ben they got Simmons. this year. Mm. As far as they got this year. I'm curious now. You say they're going to stay. I'm curious. They'll get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, okay. It's uh, it's really up to Ben Simmons if he's gonna lock him in the playoffs or not. Okay. Period. Ugh. They'll get hey, there. Ass. Ben. Okay. Come on, man. What what's, what has he done lately? What has he done for us? He hasn't done anything for the Nets. Kyrie. We know he's injury prone. Okay. Let's get Miss Kyrie Irving up out of there. Okay. okay. And KD. He don't even want to play for the team. He might as well sit out like John Wall or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. They going to the same place they went last year, Cancun with Paul George and the Clippers. Okay, he's he's going to early exit out of the playoffs. He is I see it coming out right now. Fast. But I respect my man's opinion though, that's how he feels. It's tough. So, okay, let's go to the next topic. Let's go to the next topic. Donovan Mitchell, you know, Rudy Gobert got sent to Minnesota for it seemed like the whole world plus Pluto or something like that. So I think it was a report saying that they may be interested in moving him also. So just real quick, Maybe two or three teams. What do you think it may go? If, if they do it, it may not. But I've <laughs> seen a few, a few, a few trade rumors for him. I've seen a few for the for going for the Heat. 
I could say more of the, of the teams I don't see them going to, and that's one of them there. They already solidified in, the, in their guard position. I don't see them getting rid of Duncan or trading Hero or any of that uh, for D. Mitch. It, it would be a great pick, and as much as we would love it, there's no need for that. Um, another team I seen was actually speaking of was the Nets. I don't see him going to the Nets either at all. At all? I don't see that. No, I don't see that likely. Oh. And, and if he does go to the Nets, you'd have to think about a pairing of him and Ben Simmons. I don't think that that's going to play out well. Okay. So, you said the Nets. What you think? Um, Donovan Mitchell's probably going to go to the Heat. Um, he's been with Jimmy Butler all summer. I'm just going to let that. So, you think it'd be take, take it to wherever you want. That like When players do that, we've seen players do that, it's, it's pretty much a lot. It might not be this season. Like, this is all hype, you know what I'm saying? I feel like they're bringing up a lot of hype. I don't think he'll get traded this season just like KD, but they will be out of there within the next season, for okay. sure. Jacob, where do you think Devin Mitchell may go? Nowhere. Nowhere, okay. Gabe, where do you think he'll go? I think you gotta look at what team like really has assets. Like, I can't even see the Heat having enough assets to go acquire Donovan Mitchell. So I, I think you really have to look at low-end teams at that point, or mid, mid-level mid teams. Okay, okay, okay. One last thing, go ahead, Jacob. I'm gonna transition. I mean, you saw what Rudy Gobert went for. There's no asking price for Donovan Mitchell because there's no asking price for Kevin Durant right now. I'm gonna say this. Um, uh, you say they don't have assets. You're talking about the Heat, right? They have a lot of assets, to be honest with you. Um, Tyler Hero can go. Uh, Duncan can go. Uh, Vic can go. <laughs> I mean, like. These were like they can start. Duncan can start on another they, team. You put, Vic can start on another team. Like but you don't think that's giving it, up too much just for one player? Giving up Vic, bro, bro, giving up terrible. Duncan, you're one of your top scorers. I'd argue it's not enough. That's it. That's what. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. That's maybe what's maybe, yeah. maybe two years ago I would have maybe uh, uh, entertained that trade, but we saw what happened with Donovan Mitchell last year. He was inconsistent, especially come playoffs. Big shots. He was not hitting for his team, and that's why Luca and them boys said bye bye. Are you are you judging off of the series? Are you judging off of the entire playoffs? I mean, we're, it's always a judgment we're making a trade. We're foreseeing the future, and from what I saw last season, might be on the decline for D. Mitch. I can't say that. Yeah. I can't say that. Okay, okay. Well, we're gonna go to the next topic. We're gonna go to the next topic. Okay. So, Hana, um, I know it was a report with uh, Andre Iguodala and Rasheed Wallace. Go ahead. And let me know what's up yeah. with that one. Iggy said if Rasheed Wallace played in modern day basketball today, if he played in our league today, he'd be a top five player and he'd be better than Giannis. Better than Giannis. Uh, That's crazy. I don't know about that. <laughs> Blast me. But, uh, I, I know. Uh, go ahead. How do you feel about that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me how you feel. First of all, Rasheed Wallace was not taking the ball from one side of the court to the other side of the court and people getting out the way. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and put that out there. Uh, she can shoot better, I'll give him that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but besides that, no. Not at all? No. Five, no way. No. Yeah, nah. I find that absurd. Rasheed Wallace is great, but great at catching technical fouls, not not catching Facts. points over Giannis Antetokounmpo. No. So I don't know, you know, what kind of, uh, medicinal stuff Iggy's on in the bay after the championship but uh he, he must be in it strong because he's thinking that crazy thought but no no way Rashad Wallace better not to Kumpo. Got to be real with you. Iggy. Ray Allen on the same type of time. Oh. <laughs> that ain't it Iggy that's not that's not the right one mm -hmm. so we can quickly just go to, to the next one. This is the one I'm really waiting on like this is the one this is one I'm after you know so I may have to do like a tag you know what I'm saying back him up but it's been a debate about Ray Allen Clay Thompson, I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna let Mike kick this one off. Tell me who you got, what's up, and go ahead and bye bye. What's up? Personally, I got the uh, multi ring winner, <clears throat> three point champion, better defensive player, wetter shot maker, Clay Thompson, over old man Jesus Shuttleworth Ray Allen. That was a good movie, though. It was a great movie. <laughs> Amazing movie. But that's about it over Clay Thompson. <laughs> Yikes. And I think Clay was in Space Jam actually, so that might be up for contest. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's wild. Okay, so my opinion, Ray Allen definitely is better just off of the all around game. Um, I'm not judging him off his only his shooting. I, I, I'm looking at the full body of work, playmaking, he beats him. Uh, if you even want to talk about how 
like judging off of experience how quick did he hit his peak he hit his peak quicker than clay Let's go back to seattle go back to the bucks that speaks for itself right there um clutcher don't oh, give me to speak on that oh, yeah oh, oh, oh man Clutcher. Big shot in the South Beach. Ain't Hunter, you Hunter, no. Clutch. Hold on, hold on real quick. No. Hunter, straight up, bro. Straight up. Hunter, we agreed on this Ray earlier. Allen, we agreed on Clay this Clay Thompson, simple one answer. Who you got straight up? I got Ray Allen. Ray Allen. Oh, my Thank gosh. You. All, right, All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hooper's no, hold on, hold on. Bro. Hooper's no. Gabe. Hooper's no. I remember it's somebody who you want to put in this conversation. What's up? Who you got enough? The player I got better than these two players is Reggie Miller. <laughs> Reggie Miller. That uh, is absurd. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That is What's absurd. Not hard, hard. Man's He's the only star player of these three. He constantly, hold up, around the same career stats of Clay and Ray Allen points-wise while being the number one option. He's getting contested looks constantly and still pass Ray Allen on the three-point record. Interesting. So how do you feel about that, Tori? That's those are some good good facts. I'll give you that. Those are some good facts. But in comparison of the body of work, both of comparison, bro, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't add up who, to me. Who you specifically think? Oh my bad. Go ahead. Go like ahead. category so wise, like we're talking about that both of y'all stated that Ray Allen and Reggie have been star players, but we're not just gonna acknowledge that Clay has been under the shadow of somebody uh, named Chef Curry. Like that's not gonna shift numbers a little bit. If Clay and I was stating this to a few of y'all, if Clay were to go to a separate team as James Harden did with the Rockets, would we not still look at him in that same greatness category? Because I believe he has the same potential as James Harden to go to a, a lesser team and take them far and put up great numbers. So are you saying he's a good playmaker as well? Yeah. Hmm. You don't think he could pass the ball or make great plays the same way as Ray Allen? Because Ray Allen is known for catch and shoot. Not passing the ball. Jokic got more playmaking ability than Ray Allen. So let me ask you this question. When you get further into your career, you learn to adjust to the game so you can stay in the game longer. Okay. We just watched, before this, a whole video of Ray Allen dogging in his early years. Uh, a few nice layups and dunks, a couple mid-ranges, but I didn't see no passing, really. I didn't see setting up teammates for greatness. Hold on, hold on real quick. Jacob had to take right quick. I'll let me, Jacob. I heard Michael say that Clay can go to a different team and be like good. We haven't seen it yet, but Reggie Miller is the only person that's led his own team to something. None that's fair to say. That's, that's, a, good, that's, that's a good point. Now I'll give y'all that. That's, Ray that's Allen fair. always had help. That's fair. That's but fair. truthfully, Clay Thompson is just a product of his environment. He got drafted to the situation he was in, so he never had to have to lead a team. He's just been fortunate to be game six Clay and get them rings. That's fair. And to your Reggie Miller point, um, in comparison to Ray Allen, they both led their teams. One just got to the Eastern Conference Finals, and the other one didn't. So I mean, like, if you he couldn't get past Jordan. So I mean, like, or the or the Knicks. So I mean, if you wanna have that debate, I'm gonna give you the last point. Go ahead. What up? Any last any last uh, thing you feel about this or? Oh, just no. My biggest thing was. Uh... I kind of forgot a little bit was that three-point uh, shooting thing that I brought up earlier. Just, you know, we got a three-point championship, but we're, we're talking about all around, though. Okay. Uh, I'm still going to rock out with Clay. Okay. Um, again, you guys have both admitted Ray Allen has had, and, and Reggie Miller has had the chance to be star players, but we, Clay has not had the same chance. And he's coming back off injury, so now the future is going to be shifted. He's not going to have 100% confidence. So now our numbers are always going to be shifted on him. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, they got to kind of play extended careers before they were too bad on their legs and stuff like that. Clay lost his legs, was out for a whole year, it'll never be the same. So, yeah. we gotta look at that too. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. No, 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 that's not the problem. It's just right. like, all right, so, should we really just be judging him this season? Like, seriously, since he came off an uh, injury, and I agree with you on that, like, in my opinion, we shouldn't even have judged him for the playoffs, but he did go crazy. He went crazy. I so, like, should we really just be judging him next season? I think if we judge Clay, of any future season is doing more damage to y'all's argument for Ray Allen and Reggie Miller. Not He's gonna surpass the hell out of them. Not necessarily. And if he wasn't injured, he would have definitely surpassed the hell out of them. We gotta, y'all no, act gotta. like there was no respect on Clay as the second best shooter or player damn near in the league, top five, before the injury. Then he goes away for a year, there's a bolo out on Clay Thompson, and we act like we don't know who he is. Nah, man. Who's to say injuries won't happen again? That's right. 
All right, we're gonna close it off on that. We're gonna get to the last topic, the last topic. So, give me your project, your projection on your respective NBA team. All right, so mm -hmm. my NBA team here, uh, I'm actually a Celtics fan. No bias in there. I was actually a fan of Ray Allen <laughs> and the big three there. Okay, mostly Rajon Rondo too. That was a good pickup there. Triple dub. Uh, so, but I got the dub. I got the seeds winning again. Um, the Eastern Conference Finals, again, pairing against the, the Warriors, which I do see them coming out of the East again, it's going to be a hard matchup regardless. No cap. I bet it against them during the Finals. I went against my Celtics. It paid off, but it hurt. But I think with the addition of Malcolm Brogdon and moving Marcus Smart back to his preferred position allows us to do way more damage than we did last year and put less stress on Marcus Smart running the offensive scheme the whole time. Sure. That's, yeah, I agree with that. Um, my Knicks... Do you want to? Do you want to talk OB. about it? Oh, 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 people that can run an offense and consistently score, you need to play them. Talking about Obi, talking about Quigley, they need to play. He has Quigley come off the bench with D. Rose. Why? Don't know. Quigley always outscored D. Rose. So it's just like, at this point, we have the roster. We have the fans. They're getting the money to come in. Of course. I'm not understanding why we just need to change the coaching staff and keep it moving. Before Randall gets too old or Randall gets hurt again, then now we're looking super with the contract. You know, so... To be honest with you, we, I don't even know. It, we'll, we'll make playoffs. We'll make playoffs. And we have a bet on that. We sure do. Yeah. We sure will do. Yeah. One, one thing I want to get in, because you're a Knicks fan, and, and uh, kind of going back to earlier, I forgot to mention with D. Mitch. There's been a rumor of, uh, a man, was it Mayo Quickly or Quickly and Randall for D. Mitch. How do you feel about that? And how do you feel the chances would be if y'all did acquire him? If we got him for that package, I would not be mad. Bet you wouldn't. I would not be mad. First of all, round needs to go. Period. Point blank. Bye. See you. Like okay, Obi's, Obi's sitting that. there. You got him, and then we got Sims sitting there. Like I don't understand why Randall's even on the team anymore. We should have been trying to package him all year last year, and they only tried to do it probably like three times. Nobody wants his contract either, so if we're just we just stuck with him. So um, if we get him, that'd be good. We just got to figure out how will our bench play. The starters, well, they'll figure that out. They're all veterans. They're going to get the ball to Donovan when they need to and keep it moving. But yeah, our bench will kind of be, like, lost. So we'll just figure that out. I think they'll be good. Five games over 500, and then the playoffs, you're going to find out who they really are. I might have to take you up on that five games yeah. or five hundred. Yeah, that's if they get Donovan oh, Mitchell. Okay. Yeah, they get this. I'll keep it real simple and sweet. I'm happy we got uh, our acquisition. You know, bitch, right going to step up, Hunter. You know what I'm saying? So I got it simple. I got us going minimum Eastern Conference Finals. Minimum. That is bold. Step it, put it on the. You know, oh. uh, you know where it's going. Yes. That's yeah. Eastern Conference Finals. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Student Lines Podcast. You know, to the right. You know, I had him on before, my main man, huh? Yes, sir. But to the left of me, I got main man Gabe. So everybody, where you from? From Indiana. Played a little bit of college football in my time. Okay. But yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get to this first question. In the NFC, who do you think gonna win the division in every, you know, north, south, east, or west? So I'm gonna let Hunter go ahead and go first. You want me to name all four? Yeah, you can name all four. I you got, know, just... uh, I got the Saints in the south. Saints in the south. I got the uh, the Rams out the west again. Rams out the west by Jacob Clay. I got the um, I got the Vikings actually coming out of the north. Okay. And then Holy I got the. Oh. I know. Oh. I know. And then I got the uh, Cowboys again out of the east. Okay. 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 All right, so Gabe, okay, tell me what's up, what you got? I got it a little bit different than that. I got, so obviously in the north I have the Green Bay Packers. I do not know what Hunter is talking about with that one. He's in a different plane up with me. Um, and then we're going to look at the AFC South. I got to agree with him, go with the Saints. I think Tampa Bay might have a little bit of an off year. Saints picked up too many, too many positions of need. Just depends on what like Jameis can do for them. And then... 
the East. Yeah, the least. The worst mm-hmm. division in football. In oh, and you know, might look at me weird, no crazy. No Eagle fan. Yeah, y'all well, Mike, you might like this. Uh, you might, you might, you might like this. Yeah, okay. The Eagles are gonna win that division. Yeah. What? Oh. And not only that, eleven wins on the year is what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking they have a crazy season. They break away from that whole division. Just have an overall great year. And then last, I mean, you got the obvious. You got the West. You got the Rams. They're gonna win it. Probably gonna win it all. But that's a that's a clear take. Oh, that's a bad they're they're oh, top man. they're on top of the power rankings for the past three years. I mean, it's clear you have to choose them in the division. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm gonna just go real, real deal, simple. Packers, Bucks, Cowboys, Kyler Murray. That's Kyler nice. Murray. Kyler Murray. That's Not nice. even the Cardinals, just oh. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. Okay. As you should. But in the Cardinals. As you should. As I should. As I should. Even with DeAndre Hopkins oh. missing the first yeah. half of the season? I think maybe they can go 3-3 three and three or 4-2. and two. I still think Kyler Murray can still keep him above 500 when he get there. Okay. It's going to be a domination. I mean, I don't think I'm really like getting it by like three or four games. I got him possibly winning 10 to 11. And in a tough division like that, we're going to be fighting each other in divisional games. Mm-hmm. I think that could be enough to really like take it for 11 games personally. Hmm. Jacob, who you got winning NFC West? Rams. Okay, okay, okay. That's a bold pick on the Falcons. Or not the Falcons, the Cardinals. The other bird team. My Falcons live in your head rent free. But let's go to the second <laughs> question now. They do. Uh, what would we learn about week one in the NFL? Any take, anything you can think of. What would we learn about week one? After week one, we're going to see that Michael Thomas is yet again a top three receiver in the league. It's been, he's been out the past two years. They forgot. Last time he was healthy, he was the offensive player of the year. So, uh, I mean, he's got some uh, guys around him now. He's never really had, it's usually just been him. So, he might open up the field a little bit. We gonna see. We gonna see, okay, okay. All right, Gabe, what what we gonna learn after week one where everybody laughing in the background? I think after week one, going back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady, I think we're going to learn he's going to have a drop-off year. There's going to be a reason he retired in the first place. And I don't even see Tampa Bay making the playoffs this year. I oh think it's going to be the end Lord. of Tom Brady. It's the end of Tom Brady era. We're going to see a, the Saints rise in that division. And, oh, I That's just I like, Kellerman I like game. the sound of that. I know. I, I just, know, y'all. It's about that time. You, you change your mindset when you retire from football. And I just believe he's just going to be thinking about that money the whole time he's there. It's a lot of money though. I can't even count on that one. Yeah, I take the money too. Yeah, Yeah, I take that bread. What we're gonna learn at the week one is that Cal Pitts is gonna be the best tight end in the NFL by the end of the the year. The best. Over Travis Kelsey, over Kittle. I know Pitts went to the tight end camp with Kelsey and learned all his no techniques per se. We know Cal Pitts is faster. I'm not gonna say he run better routes, but I think by the end of the year, learn his technique and everything. Kyle Pitts gonna be the one. Who's throwing to him though? Mariota or Ritter? Yeah, the one who's gonna beat Jameis Winston week one. Mm. Y'all see the shirt, man. You see the shirt. You see the tattoo. <laughs> you know, we got a little bit of bias to him, but hey, just a tad bit of bias. No, just a <laughs> little, just a little, just a little, just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. You had the Hawks make the Eastern Conference Finals the last segment. Now you have Kyle Pitts being a great. Not wrong about it, but you always talking about your birds. As long as you said I'm not wrong about it. So, <laughs> all right. So I, next I was, topic. I, let's let's get to the. Best quarterback going into the year. That's probably easy. He's just he's the best quarterback in the league. He's not. Okay. No, he's not. He's not the best quarterback in the NFL. It's simplest. Who you got? I got it. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Still. Still. Year twenty three. Year it could be twenty four for all it matter to me. <laughs> he's still gonna be balling. Last year, most touchdowns, most tighties. I mean, you can argue Aaron Rodgers for me, number two, but good, good. going good. for me, yeah, fast. Personally, for me, Tom Brady. What you got, Gabe? Well, you know I disagree with that one. I know. You know I disagree with that one. But I think we'll see a little bit of drop off in Patrick Mahomes. I don't think he'll be as great as he is. Nope. He still could be top five. Nobody's not saying that. But I think he'll have a drop off, and we'll see the man who saw, lost to him in the overtime game in the Josh playoffs. Allen. Josh Allen, he's going to break away and solidify himself as the number one man in the NFL. 
As he should. He should have won. He should have won one by now. I think the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs win it all. Think so? Yeah. Hey, Chris. Who you got your best quarterback going into this year? Mine's Patty Mahomes. I still think that the way he can get passes off with his different arm angles under pressure and still be able to scramble. And I think his wide receiving core got a little bit more balanced than it was in the past. So I don't think he's going to take a hit offensively. I think Patty Mahomes is still the best in the league. Okay, going off that though, Hunter, how do you feel about the new wide receivers? Did they add enough depth to replace Tyreek? Or do you I think, think there'll be a fall off due to that? I mean, you can't replace a, the fastest player in the league. Uh -huh. But they did get Scantling, which is a deep threat. And then they did add uh, Juju. I mean, Nicole, when, he's not, on. when he's not wide receiver one, he's a good receiver. Juju, in okay. my opinion. Number one receiver on TikTok. That's what I say about Juju. <laughs> yeah. But they definitely on, got some They got some weapons. True. Also, they got some. on that one, follow my TikTok, Snoot Lounge Podcast. So, all right. So, the last, last question. Last question. Which team you think gonna be the most disappointing this year? Uh, I think I kind of hinted in it when I talked about the division winners. I think the Packers. I think they're just gonna they have a fall off year. They've been like, damn near the best team in the league, thirteen and three. I don't know how many years in a row, and just can't get over the hump. And then losing Devontae Adams, and then the year older for Rodgers. I know he's back to back MVP, but I just see a fall off coming. Just think about that. Oh. I don't I don't I don't want to disagree with it too much because it is hard to say that they have enough weapons on offense, but the additions on defense might cancel that out. It could like you saw in the playoffs against the 49ers, the Packers offense could just not matter and their defense could win them games with Aaron Rodgers winning in the fourth quarter. So I don't know if it will matter, but I'll tell you though, okay. the team that's gonna be the most disappointing is the one that just went to the Super Bowl. Okay, okay. Yeah, and not the Rams. The Bengals. The Bengals. The ah, Bengals. okay, okay, okay. The Bengals, I think they're having a drop-off here. I think they will. They could end up third in their own division. You never know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. He could come back earlier than eight games, maybe even just a two, four-game suspension. You never even know at this point. Um, if he comes back, the Browns are lethal already. Then you would add him to the roster. Lamar Jackson, obviously going to do his thing. And the Steelers have question marks all around. They could be good, could be bad. You never know. The whole division's a blunder. So they're always at least average. Mike Tomlin does that. Never had a losing season. Until hey, last year, huh? Did they lose last year? No, 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 not us. Never lost. The AFC North Great. goes through Cincinnati. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, sir. Big Ohio guy. That's Baltimore. <laughs> you gotta get Chris. I'm gonna keep it real simple for me. Come on, man. Vikings. Vikings is going to be the most disappointing this year. Preach. I think Kirk Cousins, I mean, everybody think Kirk Cousins is good. I mean, you know, subpar, he's good one year, subpar another year. I just think this year is going to be the demise of that Kirk Cousins to the Vikings getting all that guaranteed money thing. So that's my disappointment. But the last thing I'm going to do before I kick out to some military questions, it was somebody in the audience wanting to give my Braves some love and who would not? Who would I be a guy to not let somebody give the Braves some love? So uh, go ahead and pop it off. Go ahead and say what's up. Yep, and it's, it's Chris talking. You know, I'm a familiar face, and being around Snooty Lounge podcast, you know, I get to know the big Atlanta fan base that he has, and uh, just the interaction with the community. And I, I thought it would be nice to shout out one of the NL Rookie of the Year candidates for the Atlanta Braves, Michael Harris the second. I mean, this kid is 21 years old. Like I mentioned, Rookie of the Year candidate. He comes into the league straight from double A. Doesn't even go to triple A, that's unheard of. Guys don't do that in the major leagues. And then he comes in and then immediately the Braves go on a 14 game win streak. And not to mention, Harris batting 283, solid numbers in 44 games seven homers, 24 RBIs. The kid is a, a stud, and I, I feel like Atlanta should be really excited to have another good piece in the outfield. He can hit, and he can defend. I mean, that kid's gonna be special, so shout out to you guys, Atlanta. Oh yeah, for sure, I appreciate that. So, I'm gonna let um, these guys just do a couple shout outs, and then I'm gonna let Mr. Gabe kinda ask me a couple, few military questions. I know everybody cares about my little military. Just a couple things I did a little bit. And uh, get a couple shout outs. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm gonna shout out. I got, I got a little okay, shout out. Yeah, I, I, got, I, got, I got a little shout out. 
Shout out to my Sacramento Kings, as we noticed earlier. Hoping we have a come up here. Questionable though. And a shout out to my people in the 812 Columbus, Indiana. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, for sure, for sure. Okay, uh, playing a uh, question on the same. Okay, so to close out the podcast, I figured we'd ask the host a question. You have a lot of background in the military. Yeah. You've been a lot of places. So, what is your favorite travel experience? Where was that? And then could you give us a little story into like what was your favorite moment in that? Let's keep it PG. I got you, I got you. Um, I got you. My favorite experience was the mission I did with the Special Forces in Croatia. And I was fortunate enough to go out into the town for a day and kind of just experience the town. It was back before I got even lights on my Instagram. So if you dig all the way to the bottom, you'll actually see the pictures when I was in Croatia. Mm -hmm. So. They, their money, like the euro, well, I don't think they use euro, but the money was very cheap there. So I did remember getting a couple of adult drinks for, you know what I'm saying, a little low, a couple of bucks. But all in all, it was cool to see the special forces do their thing. I mean, I'm not going to go into full details, but I understand why they got special in front of their name. So I saw a dead man see, actually took a picture of like the water just so beautiful and clear. Took a dive in it, saw the sunset. Just dope. I wish I could do it again. You got a favorite food in Croatia? They had uh, this Croatian pizza. I forgot the specific name of the restaurant, but it was a pizza spot. It was like a local mom and dad shop, but I wish I could order it and send it here. Okay. It's pretty good. I don't think DoorDash goes that far, but. No, not that far. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, for sure. But uh, I appreciate everybody for the help. Everybody in the background, thank y'all. Yes, I know we all. I love